Citizen with my lovely wife, Nikita Citizen. We are the senior pastors of Spirit Life Church of God located at 4889 Hill Road in Potter Springs, Georgia, where you are always welcome. Honey, tonight I'm excited. We have okay. a good friend of mine, Gil Sharaus. He is a executive director of the Water and Sewer Authority in Douglas County, Georgia. But tonight is not about his job title with WSA or Water Sewer Authority. It's about being a Christian Amen. at the job. It's about being a Christian wherever you go in your community. We're going to bring it out, but, but think about it. How many people you know go to church every week and they leave their faith at home when they go to work? They put God on the shelf. Well, that's a good way of putting <laughs> it. But, but when you go somewhere, the Bible says he's with us always. Amen. But we also need to leave our homes go to work with Jesus on the inside. He's called us to be good stewards. And tonight you're going to hear about a story of what a steward really means, how Amen. to be a steward of what God has put you in charge of, how to live your life holy, not in just one aspect of your Amen. life, but in all aspects of your life. And also tonight we have a, for the very first time at WATC, singing her heart out, Shante Jameson. She's going to be blessing us with song tonight. Now this young lady can sing. Now, you know, some people say, I can sing, but she really can sing. And Hallelujah. she sings for the glory of God. That's what makes it even more beautiful. I know when she's saying, I get excited. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Right. But also, God has given me the privilege to, to present a, a word to you tonight. I want to present this title to you, Answering the Call. Now, with all the shots that's been handed out across Georgia, a lot of people has received their first COVID shot. Some have got their Johnson & Johnson one-time shot. We're starting to get a handle on COVID-19. The enemy is being defeated in that area of fear. Uh, how do we move forward? Because there's a call God has on all of us, and we have to answer that call. Amen. Things are warming up outside. Uh, things are starting to open up a little bit more. So how will you answer the call tonight? So. Get your family on the phone, email somebody, text somebody, Facebook somebody, let them know Atlanta Live is on. And I want you to know, if you need help tonight, call that number, 770-300-9828. We want to pray with you. We want to bless you. We want God to touch you tonight. So let's go to the music with Shante Jameson singing, Our God, and we'll be back.
Hey man, don't go anywhere. Shante will be back singing all night long. We're gonna be worshiping God, praising God. But honey, I'm excited. We have my friend tonight, Mr. Gil Shiraz. Welcome back to Atlanta Live. Thanks for having me, John. My man. Honey, let's get into this right now. We talked about being a Christian. And being a Christian requires good stewardship. Now you are, give us your title. The Executive Director at the Douglasville, Douglas County Water and Sewer Authority, or the WSA. WSA. Now that's a government agency. Now it's a little bit, what they call it, a quasi... Quasi-governmental agency. So we're, we're part government, but we operate like a, a business. So we're not part of a county government or a city government. We're a, we're a separate agency, basically, focusing on water, sewer, and stormwater. Now I understand you got a large project coming up. We'll get into that in just a minute. But what I want our viewers to meet Gil Shiraz at the place here. You are a first day Christian. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want you viewers to understand, this man has a very important job. He's steward over our water, which is the essential, uh, high value commodity. If the water gets messed up, your whole town community can get sick, people can die, it, it's horrible. So you have a very high value job. You have over 200 plus employees, you have a multi-million dollar budget, all that you have to manage and keep the water safe. But how do you do that absent from being a Christian? So, I mean, there, there's plenty of people in my line of work that aren't Christians. Now, I am one, so, so what that means is when I leave, and, and Nikita said it earlier, right? When I leave church on Sunday, the Holy Spirit goes with me. God Amen. is with me wherever I go. So when I enter the workplace on Monday morning, I'm not doing that devoid of God. I'm doing that with God and with all the th things and the gifts and the talents that He's given me. I can take those talents and apply them to my secular career just like I apply them in the church world. So, you know, the, the Bible is very clear that we are given gifts, we're given talents to, to use in His church. Well, those same talents are very useful in the corporate world as well. So whatever you're doing, whether you're digging a trench or you're running a company or anything in between, God gives us talents that we are to use in all of life, certainly in the work of the church, but also in, in the That's whole right. of life. Because when you walk outside them doors, people need to see Christ inside of you. Right. But what's bad is when we see a Christian, they say they're Christians, but they're the same. <laughs> you can't tell them you they don't look like it on Monday, do they? They don't look like it on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Much less Friday night. <laughs> well, the thing I want our viewers to understand is we all have jobs. We all have things to do. We all have important work to do. But what I want to get to our viewers is you have to be consistent. That's it. Because to be in Christ is to die in Christ. To die in Christ means I've given my life totally to Christ. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like being a father, mm -hmm. a husband, still a son? Mm -hmm. You know, you're still a son. You're still a brother. You, you still have family that you're accountable to, but you, you have your own family. What, what's important to you when you say, I'm a Christian? When you say that, what does that really mean? That, that, is, that is a loaded question. First, let me, let me talk about like being intentional with the time, talent, and treasure that God gives us, because I think it's important when we you know, look at how we, how we use what God's given us, whether it's our money or our time or the talent that He's given us, we have to be intentional in using that. We, li we like to think about tithing all the time, right? Everybody knows, you know, you're supposed to give 10% right. to the church. Well, well, we're supposed to give back to God all of what He gives us. So, so in order to do that, in order to give my time correctly, in order to give back to God of the time that He gives me, um, I need to be intentional with my schedule. So my wife and I, at the beginning of every year, and, and my brothers joke with me a lot, and some of my, my friends joke with me, y'all spend all this time on your, on your calendar, why? Well, it's because we want to be intentional with the time God's given us so that we're able to, one, give back to Him. So I want to, I want to block out the time for God, for That's personal right. worship, for Bible study and prayer, but also time for the church so that I can give back to, right. to God's church. Um, so you have to be intentional in that. And, and on the talent side of things, the same thing applies. We have to be intentional in the talents God has given us to use them in the various ways, again, certainly to the church, but back to the secular world, to the secular world, but also in the other avenues of service that, that right. we have before us. So 
service to my family. I'm, I'm a husband and a father, and that's one of my primary roles. So I have to have to dedicate the resources right. to that. So I block out. I block out time. I almost said no to coming tonight, John, because I'm missing my daughter's soccer game. <laughs> well, that, that was a hard, that was a hard well, decision. I my wife that. and I talked about. It. I, I didn't commit it immediately, right? Because my wife and I needed to talk through: is is this right. the right use of the resource of time? If it's going to gonna be fruitful for the kingdom, right? Is it kingdom worthy? That's right. Absolutely. Because Good. if you take it away from your children, it better be kingdom worthy. Exactly. Take it away from your family. Or you right. And that's why I wanted to part the question. What does it mean to be a Christian? Mm -hmm. Because being a Christian is not just sitting in a pew. Being a Christian is not just what I'm on a Christian television station having an interview about, about my, my walk with God. But being a Christian is tied to being the person that you are. Mm -hmm. Now, you serve in a lot of different capacities. We talked about being the executive director of the Water and Sewer Authority. What other areas do you serve? One, in the local church. Do you okay. serve... So so in, in the local church, I, I go to First Baptist Church of, of Douglasville. Really? Senior Pastor Tim Aiken, yeah. <laughs> hey, Tim. <laughs> well, I just wanted to make sure you give yeah, him a shout yeah, out. Make sure you give, give Pastor Aiken a shout out. Um, so, so I serve in a number of ways. Um, I serve on the finance committee. I've served there for a few years, currently serving as the chair of that committee. Um, I'm a deacon at, at the church. I served as chair on that last year. I'm also a Sunday school teacher. I lead a small group, men's Bible study. I know you're very proud about your small men's group yeah. that y'all have a, a fellowship and y'all talk. People I know that attend you know your group. You guys have gone through that. Uh, but that's the thing about being a Christian, folks, it's not part-time. That's right. It's four you ain't even got, you, that's just a piece of where you start. <laughs> right. So let, let's keep delving into this thing. So that's church. That, that's church. But, that, but one thing, you know, just to, and maybe this will, you know, help us segue into the other. When we're using our gifts the way God gave them to us, it's a joy. So, so a lot of times go. people say, well, Gil, how do you do so much? And how do you, how are you involved in so many things? Well, one, I'm intentional with my time. So make sure to you know, bucket it out in the, in the right ways. But two, when, when we're serving right. and we're using our That's gifts, right. the and, way God gave it to us and who you're doing it for. And we love it. And, right. and realizing that Why you're doing there's it. an eternal perspective right. at hand. So, well, what I enjoy watching you is you enjoy your job. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people in the position that you have would, would loathe, <laughs> would loathe <laughs> church or other outside activities in the community because I'm already an executive director of a large right. utility. Why would I have to be on the, you know, Chamber of Commerce? Why do I have to serve, you know, on the uh, other boards throughout the community? So how many other boards you serve on? I said the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I'll, I'll say like half a dozen. So, so yeah, real quickly, you know, I'm, on, I'm on the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, currently serving as the chairman of, of that board. I'm going to serve on the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Board of Directors, local Douglas County FCA board. I'm going to serve in, in the industry. So, you know, we also, you know, give a lot back to our water industry. I serve on a couple of boards there. I actually had a government, uh, Governor um, Kemp appointed me to a licensing board two years ago. So very proud to serve uh, the state government on a, on a water and wastewater license scene board and, 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 and the reason is not for, for personal and acclaim. It has nothing to do with all the me. Boards. Everywhere I go, Nikita, <laughs> right. God goes with me, right? You know what? You, <laughs> you, we went out to eat a few months um, with you guys, um, was it last month? A couple of weeks or ago. A couple of weeks ago. I am now even drinking out of the faucet because you really <laughs> talked me into it that it's clean Good. because I trust your mm -hmm. spirit. She wouldn't take my advice. <laughs> yes, I would. Because <laughs> we quit buying water when I got on the board. I've been on the board a while now, but right. the thing is, watching you daily throughout the community, you're not just working in the community, you are known for your good works. And that's what I want our Christian community to understand. Mm -hmm. yes. We have a mandate from God to go Amen. ye into all the community. Yes. I know they say all the world, but the world is our community of influence. Starts in Jerusalem, right? Amen. Your Jerusalem. And then it's going to go to Samaria and all the other areas. But for us, as men of God, women of God, yes. we cannot just continue to go to church, have our Christianity in our segments of society, but not a, a society as a whole. And that's why I wanted you to come tonight, because right. when I see you, Gil, I always said this to my wife, it's better for someone else to brag on you than to brag on yourself. So let me brag oh, on yes. you tonight. Uh, you Christy, know I don't like being bragged Christy, on, John. <laughs> I want you to know you got a great husband, a great father to your children, but I see him serving my community, mm -hmm. my community that I live and work in. Mm -hmm. And they know that I got other Christian men 
that's creating policy for my community, that's creating uh, not only policy, but, but taxes. Uh, how are we going to tax uh, the customer? Uh, you keep that in mind. You, you're mindful of, of rates, uh, how uh, even though we have a, a little leeway there, but you're mindful of, of how you raise rates or when not to raise rates, depending on what the economy is doing in the community. But also beyond church, uh, when you talk about the Chamber of Commerce, that's a larger uh, business community. Mm -hmm. And you certainly, everybody's not going to be Christians. Mm -hmm. But when you walk in these meetings, your light comes in with you. Exactly. How does that feel to know that when you walk in a room, you can change the atmosphere because of your God inside right. of you? Let's talk about that a little bit. Have you ever had instances where you were in a, not a Christian meeting, but just a secular meeting, but somehow you was able to testify or give a word of encouragement or, or just speak into someone's life that so, might have been broken. So I think, you know, the, the, two, the two best ways that I see doing that, because there's a lot of areas in life where we might, might not be able to, you know, proclaim the gospel fully in that space, right? Just for whatever reason, we may not be able to do that, but we can still proclaim it with our actions. Being you know, certainly intentional. When, being intentional. So, yes. so the two things that, that I try to do whenever I can in those kind of, experiences or events or, you know, spaces um, is one, you know, people always talk about well, what what'd you do this weekend? You, how was your weekend? That kind of thing. First thing I always do is I talk about going to church. I mean, that, that is just such an easy thing for all of us open as believers to do. Right. And sometimes it does open great doors to, oh, really, what what was the sermon about or what, what was going on? Oh, where do you go to church? You know, those kind of doors. Right. Sometimes it's just a that was all that that comment but gets, and you, move, and you move on. But that's witnessing, and it's so easy. And your lifestyle is so easy, and it and it mm -hmm. tells people. And, and when you consistently give that answer, mm -hmm. they they get that 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 is part of what you do. The other is, um, and, and I don't remember who who taught me this years ago. Um, when somebody says something's going on in their in their life, if the space is right, and be sensitive. But hey, mm -hmm. let me pray for you. Can that's I pray good. for you? Or I'm going to pray for you about that. And then, yes. and then do it. Like do actually it. pray. And you know what I love doing is doing and sending the them spot. a quick note. Yeah, do it on the spot if you can. Yes. And if you can't, when you get home, or we, you know, get to the car after the meeting, right? Get, right? Pray for them and then send them a quick note. Hey, just want to let you know I prayed for I you. Prayed. You know, mm -hmm. hope everything's going well. If I can help in any way, let me know. Just. I mean, two super simple things because that, that we can, can do. Because everybody can say, I, I, I pray for you. And they forget. They get in the car and forget all mm -hmm. about it. They're not intentional about it. That's just something right. they know to yeah. say. Some of my best short prayers were at an elevator, mm -hmm. in a parking lot, or in a, in a hallway. Mm -hmm. Some of my best sermons were preached in between the hallway <laughs> and the next office. Mm -hmm. When I say sermon, it was just sharing the gospel. Right. That's right. Sharing the gospel. So let, let's do this. How do you deal with your faith when you're going through crises? Because mm -hmm. we talked about the great stuff about Gil Shirouse. Mm -hmm. Now let's, let, let people see the real Gil. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with crises? So, so as, as, you, as you guys know, my wife has battled cancer twice now. So recently breast cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma about 15 or 16 years ago. And, and there's been a number of other crises through which our family has gone and, and faith is really the basis of, of how we deal with it. My wife and I talk about this all the time, whether it's through a death or through you know, any other you know, trouble somebody's going through. You know, one, our personal faith um, you know, really does carry us through. The Bible is very clear that faith is a shield against the arrows of the devil. I mean, that, that is one of the, the bodies, right. of, you know, the good. armors of God, right? Um, faith is that shield. So that's the first thing that you know, I, I put up against. Protecting the heart. It protects the heart, right. Yes. Um, but, but then also, you know, the body of Christ, I think, is so important in dealing with crises. And that's where, you know, we, we just think, you know, the secular world has, you know, they have a disadvantage in dealing with issues because they don't have the church around them. And when, when we're going through something, that's when, you know, our body of Christ should rally around us and, and be that support mechanism for us to deal with them. You know, you guys have a great church. Y'all do that well. We have a great church. They, we do that well. That, you know, in big churches, like some, some churches are, it's important to get invested in a small group so that, you know, you can have intentional relationships where you can really get to know people and pour into people and, and what I like to call doing life with one another because right. that's really how you get through crises is personal faith, having a time of personal worship, Bible study and prayer, that's so important, having that, that personal relationship. Um, but also those those other relationships in the body are so important to, to dealing with it. I, I just don't see how the non-believer does it without it's God tough. and it's without tough. our church family. I, it's I, tough. I don't. Wow. Yeah. And you don't, and, and 
believing and having faith in God is, it has no color to it. No, absolutely Because God not. says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. It's not about the color of our skin. No. We just love God. We're all the we same people. people. That's it. Yeah. Well, we get we all came from one God. One God. And you're intentional wherever you go. We're all created in His likeness. Man, that's good. Well, we're getting down to about four minutes. I, I want to talk about a couple of things. You got one of the largest projects going on in the southwest region of this country. You're building a new dam. Mm -hmm. Now, how big is this dam you're building? So, so the, the reservoir, we're expanding our Dog River Reservoir, is currently 1.9 billion gallons. I'm sorry, I'm an engineer, so I, I, I got to talk some numbers. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, John's going to tell me I'm nerded out, and, and that's okay. Uh, so, so current reservoir is 1.9 billion gallons. We need a much larger reservoir or bucket of water. Um, so we'll, we'll build the reservoir to be 6.5 billion gallons of water. So we'll hold almost three, or a little bit over three times what we're wow. currently yeah, storing. There's going to be a lot of dirt being moved around, a lot of work being done. A lot of dirt and concrete. And all of that is to increase that bigger bucket. But in doing all of that, you never lost sight of why you're doing this. You said a word to me, stewardship. Stewardship. Wow. How does that play into your role? Because so, I made a $150 million project. That's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that's nothing compared to the souls and the lives that are going to be changed. How does that offset? So, so I think, you know, when I think of what I do in my job, I think, you know, service and stewardship, and, and those are biblical principles That's when right. you get right down to them, and I apply those in my, in my job. So I, I'm, a, I'm a servant at heart, and so I'm serving my community in my, in my job as executive director and providing water and sewer services. I mean, it's built right into our name. Um, the other part is the stewardship part. So we're called to be wise stewards of all that God has entrusted us with. Um, well, the, that plays into what we do at, at work as well. So we, we have to be a steward of the environmental resources that are in Douglas County. We have to be a, a wise steward of the community resources in um, employment and um, population. So as our community continues to grow, they will continue to need more water and more wastewater services. So we have to plan for those. Um, so we have done a 50 year planning horizon and we know we need more water in a reservoir. We need to be able to withstand a drought. So we know we need a bigger bucket. So we're going off and getting it. But part of stewardship too is being a wise steward of the financial resources. Again, you know, personally we talk about tithing and things like that, but in, in our business we have to be a wise steward of our rate payers resources and so that, you know, we don't have to raise rates, you know, enormously to, to pay for a project. So we, we've spent the last few years preparing for this project so that, you know, we could we could do it without having a big hit on our ratepayers. That's being a wise steward of our financial resources. And, and and the ultimate goal is your ultimate benefit is back to those users, back to the ratepayers, back to the customers, back to the people of Douglas County, the businesses of Thank Douglas you. County. Well, Gil, I want people to see what a real Christian looks like, not just on paper, but actually talking, walking, living it out. And I, I'm proud to know that we are friends, but I'm also glad to know that as a ratepayer in Douglas County, I got someone that's watching over the safety of my mm -hmm. water, but get me in a place where it won't be over expensive to, to bring it to my home. Right but being a Christian about doing everything you do. So thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. We got so much more we can talk about, but man, we thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Wow, thank now we're gonna go back to the music with Shantae Jamison singing God So Love, and she's gonna go back into living in the, oh man, in overflow. the overflow. I couldn't see that. <laughs> Listen folks, don't forget to call that number 770-300-9828. We wanna pray with you. God bless you.
afflictions come lay them down at the foot of the cross jesus is waiting god so loved the world bring all your failures bring your addictions come lay them down at the foot of the cross jesus is waiting god so loved the world Again, that was Shante Jamison singing. 
Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Honey, we met this beautiful soul at an outreach. Yes, we did. I mean, she uh, uh, just stood out. We was out there giving out food and toiletries. And she started and coming to community. the church. She came to our local mm -hmm. church, and tonight we were able to showcase her talent. She is part of our uh, worship team at Spirit Life Church of God, and tonight was her debutante, where she's on TV singing <laughs> live. I'm so proud of and her. And I, I love her. She has the biggest heart ever. That's why it's so important when we do go ye into all the world and preach the good news, you never know who you're going to run into. You're going to run into a, a Shantae Jameson with that big heart that loves wow. Jesus. And I had the privilege of marrying her and her wonderful husband, Clarence. I mean, God is good. God is good. And he will use people to answer the call. Honey, yes, he will. I need you to help me preach right now. Do, do you mind? I don't mind. Listen, <laughs> folks, strap yourself in. God has given this word, answer the call. With, with all that's going on in America and around the world, things are now starting to shift. The fear is lifting. Amen? Amen. I think the worry, the doubt, and the fear is starting to lift. We've had this big stimulus that, that flooded the, the economy. People that have a little money in their pocket now. It's warming up. Amen? Amen. The cold is breaking. We're having a great uh, uh, beginning of a spring. So now God is saying it's time to answer the call. What's the call? To go ye into all the world, preach and teach the good news to everyone Amen. with all that fear that's been gripping people. People need to hear about Jesus now. Amen. Amen. So tonight, let me share this gospel message called Answer the Call. And, and the, the subject is going to be found tonight. If you allow me to, to just share, it's going to be a scripture that I find very great. It's Isaiah chapter 6, verse 6 through 8. And this is when Isaiah was, he had came into the presence of the Lord and the seraphim had grabbed a, a piece of coal from the altar of God mm -hmm. and touched his lips. It said, now your guilt has been removed and your sins have been forgiven. And then he asked this question. This is God. The Lord asked this question. Then I heard the Lord asking, whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Whom shall I send as a messenger to these people? And then he said, who will go for us? Amen. So God is asking, who's going to answer the call? And Isaiah, at that moment, he said, here I am, Lord, send me. Yes. And I think a lot of us feel like Isaiah. Here I am, Lord, send me. But before you open your mouth and say, here I am, Lord, send me, I want to give you this. Don't just say it, here I am, send me. First, we must be saved when we go. That's right. So if we're going to go because God is sending us, we better go saved. Yes. And if we're going to go, we better go to the name of Jesus. Amen. Now that's found in Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Read that scripture for me if you don't mind, honey. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Think about that. If God is saying, whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? Mm. And you say, here I am, Lord, send me. If you're not saved and you try to go and be a messenger for the Lord and you're not prepared, you, you remember the seven sons of Sceva? Yes. They all went and tried to cast out this demon and because they saw Paul do it. And that demon said, Paul, I know. <laughs> Jesus, I know. But who are you? you? And that they jumped on it and wore them out. So if I'm going to go and battle the world with all this fear and all this doubt that's in the world to, today, you better go saved and you better go in the name of Jesus because when you get there, the devil going to be waiting. And you have power after the Holy Ghost come upon you too. Amen. You better have that power. Well, that's why we have to sure. be saved. Amen. Because when we get there, the, the world needs something. That's but right. when you get there, what you going to tell the people? What you going to tell the people? Listen. My point, my second point is this. Tell the people, Jesus washed away my sins. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because that's what Isaiah said. Mm -hmm. He said, here I am, Lord, send me because he had just washed away his guilt. He had just forgiven his sin. Now he was prepared to go. He knew he was going, who he was going for. Yes. He was going in the name of the Lord. So if the Lord is asking you tonight, whom shall I send to this people? And you say, here I am, Lord. Point number one, you better go saved. You better get saved. And the only way you're going to get saved is in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Read that scripture one more time. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must 
be saved. Amen. And that's Acts chapter 4, verse 12. So if, if I'm asking God to send me in this world today, and a lot of us want to be used of God. A lot of us want God to take us from, from a desolate place, of what we call Lodabar, amen, a dry, desolate place, and we say, God, use me in these end times. God, take me and use me for your purpose. Well, if I'm going to ask God to use me, I want to first ask him for his spirit. Yes. Because when people see me showing up, it has to be authentic. It has right. to be real. How can I give you something that I don't possess? Right. And also you're doing it for his glory and not for your glory to be seen, but you want to do it for God's glory. Well, I know there's a lot of superstar preachers out there. Yes. Because you get the fame, you get people uh, loving you, you get the gifts, you get all the, the benefits that come but along. But who are you doing it but for? But who are you doing it for? Amen. Because people know when you're loving them from a real place of love from God's love, or were you just there to, to have a good photo, uh, what they call it, a, a, photo, a photo moment? Uh, yes. But when I go to someone who's hurting, I want to be able to give them some relief. Amen. If I go to someone who's afraid, I want to give them some hope. Amen. If I go to someone who's thinking about suicide or who, who's been beaten yes. by life that, that needs to be lifted up, I better bring them Jesus. Amen? Amen? Because the only person that can save you is in the name of Jesus. And point number two, when I get Amen. there, I want them to understand that he saved me. Amen. Amen. Because if I'm saved, people are going to see my testimony. Because the Bible says you are known by the word of your testimony. testimony. And how can you testify of the salvation of the Lord if you hadn't already accepted yourself. And that's why it was so important and I was so excited that Brother Gil, Gil shared that of the, our workplace. We should go out with Jesus. We carry Jesus wherever we walk. When we walk into a dark room, the light comes on. And, and, and by having Gil Sharaps was by, it's not by happenstance. That was very intentional because here's a man who has an executive position. He's a high-level executive, but yet he still finds time to serve in his local church. He still finds time to serve with the Chamber of Commerce, with the Kiwanis Club, and all these other uh, groups that he and serves. He don't on. wear all of these titles on his shoulders Amen. either. What you see is a Christian. What you see is I'm a Christian, Christian. first Amen. because if I'm going to go as a messenger for the Lord, I'm going to go as a child of God. Amen. And when I show up as a child of God, people can see who my daddy is because I look just like my daddy. Right. Amen. I act like my daddy. I have my daddy's personalities. Amen. Amen. I have my daddy's traits and they can see I've been with the Lord. Hallelujah. Right. But, but, but this is what I want to get to, honey. A lot of times people want to get there but they don't know what to say when they get there. Mm -hmm. They, they want to talk about politics or they want to talk about their self or they want to talk about their misery. When I get mm -hmm. to someone, I want to let them know, first, God has washed me right. with, with his blood. That's right. Amen. I've been washed by the blood of Jesus. That's right. My sins have been forgiven. Like he said to Isaiah, your, your guilt has been removed and your That's sins right. have been forgiven. So when I get there, people are going to say it's working in my life. Amen. Amen. If it ain't working for me, how can I ask you to take, right. take on a burden that I can't even myself carry? Because if you um, told me you was a Christian and then I go to work and you act on Monday mornings or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday and you're acting like a nutcase, I'm like, <laughs> who are you worshiping? Well, the thing is, we ought to be a full-time Christian. That's it. And right now with us Fully coming committed. On, on the other side of this, this world-changing event, people need hope. Mm -hmm. And when people see you with hope, it, it's a testimony. That's right. Let, let me give you my point. Jesus washed away my sins, giving me a new birth. A new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. When you get born again, he gives everyone a gift. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's a free gift from God. Everyone who accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, yes. that salvation comes through only the name of Jesus by which you can be saved. He washes you into the, a new birth. See, the new birth is for unbelievers. The renewal is for Christians. See, I know we're talking about salvation, but what about those who've been saved? What about those who know the Lord, but have, have lost that love for Christ, who has backslidden, who have allowed sin to creep back in? That's that renewal. Not only will he give rebirth to the sinner, he'll give renewal to the Christian. And it's all done through the Holy Spirit. So tonight, if you want that rebirth, 
and you never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, and you want to be used by God, first of all, let me say this, accept him as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Make him your Lord and Savior. Let him save you. Amen. And when you go, you're going to go now with the power of the Holy Ghost working in you, not just around you, but working through you, and that's power that the world can't take from you. Amen. That's a joy that the world didn't give you. That's a peace that the world didn't give you, so the world can't take it from you. Amen. Satan himself cannot rob you of the joy God gave you. That's right. So tonight when God says, who will I send to this people? Who will go for us? Yes. Here I am, Lord. Send me, because you have saved me by the blood of the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ. Here I am, Lord. Send me, because I'm going to go with your message, which is the gospel. That's right. And how can you go with the gospel if you never get in it, if you never read it? You never just sit there and meditate on it. The Bible says meditate on my word day and night. That's right. Amen. Tell me, how do you, how do you witness to people? My lifestyle. Exactly. Of being intentional. And that's what Gil was saying. His lifestyle represents Christ. It's not an act. Right. You don't have to turn it on or turn it off. It's who you are. Because I won't back up, I won't bow down, and I won't turn around for no one here on earth. Think about the three Hebrew boys. They was facing the fiery furnace. If they didn't bow down to, to the statue that was built by the king, and they refused, they told the king to his face, we're not going to do it. That's right. We're not going to do it. And we as Christians of the church of God, we got to start standing up to the world and say, we're not going to bow down to fear. We're not going to bow down to intimidation. Job. I, I, you, you've been studying the book of Job. Yes. A lot of people think, oh, man, I'm not going to read Job. There's so much calamity in Job. But you got to get beyond the calamity onto the other side. That's it. Because Job kept his faith. Even if his own wife said, this curse God and died. He's taking a stand. He said, no, what? I'm going to stand up for Christ because God gave me a rebirth. That's God it. Born, he, he, I was born again. And in that born again experience, he gave me the Holy Ghost. He when, knew that he knew that he knew that he knew that he knew. And that's a power that's, right. that, that's not worldly. That's not a worldly power. That's right. It's not something you can get in the gym. Amen. <laughs> it's something you can only get on your knees that's through crying it. out to God, that's calling it. on the name of Jesus. Amen. And that's found in Titus chapter 3. Let, let, let me give you time. I want, I want to go to this scripture in Titus. It's a beautiful scripture. Titus chapter 3. Let, let me get into the word because I don't want to just make it about my opinion. I want to give it to you through the scripture. Titus in Titus chapter 3 verse 3 through 7 says, Once we too were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy and we hated each other. But, but God. But. Woo! But God. But when God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, verse 5, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Thank God for his mercy tonight, because only through his mercy can we get saved. Let me read on. He says, he washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out his spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. That's Titus yes. chapter 3. Listen, when God says, who will go for us? Here I am, God. Send me. And I want the church to rise up and start saying again, here I am, God. Send the church Amen. of the living God. Amen. Once again, let the church stand up for righteousness. Once again, let the church begin to share the testimony of the goodness of God. Once again, when God calls on the church, let us not be lethargic and lazy. Let That's us right. go out to these communities and give away free food. The government is giving away free food. You know, we partnered with a local church uh, last week, uh, West Metro in, in Douglasville. We took over 200 boxes of 40-pound boxes of food to Powder Springs, College Park, East Point, because this one church was willing to share the resources they had. That's how good God is. And we fed over 200 families. Amen. That's the body of Christ working together. Who will go for us? That's right. The church. Hallelujah. Like, honey, I got one more point, and I got to park this train. Amen. Folks, God is so good and he loves you so much. Always before asking us to answer the call. Listen to this. Yes, we must answer the call, but always before asking us to answer the call, Jesus Christ, our Savior, will equip us to go and do his will. Amen. Wow. 
there's no stone he will left unturned to give us what we need to go forth and, and do his will. And he said he will equip us. He will do equip his us. Will. And let me give you that last scripture. It's, it's found in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 21. I want y'all to get this in the word because I don't want it to be about man. I want it to be about God. Right. Hit this with Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 says, Thou made a God of peace who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus. Just like Jesus Christ died, but God raised it from the dead. Mm. You may be in a dead situation right now, but God can raise it back to life. Okay. Amen. He says, The great shepherd of the sheep and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood. Look, when you ratify something, Selah, so shall it be. That means That's God. How about that? How about that? Right. May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. God will equip us to do his will when we answer the call, but we have to be willing to go. Mm -hmm. If you are willing to go in the name of Jesus, God will equip you to do yes. his will. And when you get there, you won't be tired. You won't be worn out. You'll be refreshed. You'll be ready. You'll be renewed because of that rebirth and that renewal through the Holy Ghost. Tonight, I want to thank you for allowing me to share this gospel message with you. But now it's time for every one of us who are born again to answer the call yes. and be willing to go. But when you go, go in the name of Jesus. Amen. And when you go in that name, you better be saved. Amen. I I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Call that number, 770-300-9828, because we want you to answer the call. Shantae Jamison will now sing Holy Spirit. What a fitting song. God bless you.
I hope you enjoyed that by Miss Shante Jamison. Miss Linda Ball, your baby girl knocked it out the park tonight. So Bree, when mama get home, give her a big hug. Say, mama, you sang for the glory of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, folks, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program because here at WATC, our goal is to be a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. The management staff, all the way from the top to the bottom, everything that's done at this station is to be a blessing to our audience and to glorify God. So tonight, I hope you were blessed with the music. I hope you enjoyed seeing what it means to have a position of authority, but yet be a Christian. To answer the call when God knocks on your heart and be willing to go forth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and do what he has called us to do, and that's be a witness. That's be a light to this dark world. And God will do great things through you if you allow him. But tonight, it's never too late to call that number, 770-300-9828. We will always want to pray with you here at the station. We love you. Our prayer room is, is the lifeline of this station. Our prayer time uh, with you when you call in means a lot to us. So never feel that that number is something you can't use. It's something we want you to use. Call that number, 770-300-9828. And always, honey, yes. give them an invitation to Spirit Life. Let them know they can come. 4889 Hill Road, Powder Springs, Georgia. If you're in that area, you don't want to miss it. The Holy Ghost always shows up and shows out. Spirit Life Church of God, we love you. Nothing you can do about it. And may God bless you. Have a great night.